Hi, welcome to the 14 day weather forecast. The meteorological summer now has less than two weeks left to run and I think all in all it's been a mixed season. Certainly down here in the south I think it's probably been quite disappointing for many people. And really the changeable mix theme looks like continuing through the next couple of weeks. I'm going to start by uh, taking a look at the view across Europe on the North Atlantic. The sequence here is generated using data from the GFS model. It runs from 18 GMT, Wednesday, August the 18th. At the outset, there's a little bit of light rain across the northern half of Scotland, some drizzly conditions in the west, but many places are dry. However, if we just take a look into the Atlantic here, little feature is heading eastwards and that's set to bring some showery rain during Thursday to southern and central regions at least. Then as we head towards the weekend, the details start to become uncertain. Another area of low pressure is going to be pushing in from the Atlantic. That's going to be bringing showers or longer spells of rain to much of the UK, but it's possible that during Saturday, central and eastern England could stay mainly dry and possibly quite warm. But by Sunday, it does look as though showers will become more widespread and heavy. And then as we head into the early part of next week, high pressure starts to build, but it looks like being centred to the northwest of the UK. So in southern and eastern England, the risk of showery rain continues. And with this east or northeasterly flow developing, it will be probably quite cool for the time of the year. By the end of this sequence on uh, Wednesday, that high pressure is starting to exert more influence and showers are becoming increasingly confined to eastern coastal counties, if this is correct, of course. So just to show a couple of um, upper air temperature forecast charts from the same model run, uh, Friday the 20th of August, upper level air warmth is being pulled up here from the southwest. You can see the yellows and oranges indicating higher temperatures, the greens in the northeast showing a cooler air mass. Jumping forwards to Tuesday the 24th, by then high pressure centred for northwest, this cooler northeasterly flow developing, and that's indicated by the greens and light yellows over the UK. So we're seeing that cooling trend, that cooler upper level air moving down across the UK through the second half of the first week. What that means in terms of two metre temperatures is shown on this chart, which is for Friday the 20th. Maximums in the southeast, 24 Celsius, 75 Fahrenheit potentially, will be dependent on uh, the amount of cloud and sunshine uh, which develops. Cooler generally as you head northwards. Tuesday the 24th, by then, temperatures in the south and the east, 16 or 17 Celsius, it's quite cool as that northeasterly flow becomes established. But if you head up to the northwest, 20 being shown there, it's actually warmer, closer to the area of, that, of, of high pressure and more sheltered from that northeasterly flow. So possibly by then the warmest conditions to be found in western Scotland, northwestern parts of the UK. Looking at the rainfall profile, these forecast charts are showing accumulated rain. The one on the left is four days 0 to 5, the one on the right is four days 0 to 10. They're both generated using data from the GFS model. I think the key point to note probably is that they're quite similar to each other. That suggests that most of the rain will be falling between days 0 to 5, with drier conditions developing through days 5 to 10. In terms of the actual distribution of the rain, well, the wettest conditions are shown to be in Northern Ireland, um, Southern and Western Scotland, along with Northern and Eastern England. But they are just a snapshot from the GFS, so don't be too focused on the details. So with the GFS suggesting a switch to dry weather towards the end of the week as high pressure becomes more dominant, is that scenario supported by the other deterministics? Well, just as a reminder, here is a GFS, high pressure centered to the northwest by Wednesday, the 25th of August, showers increasingly confined to eastern counties. The Canadian model at the same time, 
that also has high pressure having a good deal of influence. The German Icon model, high pressure here is built further northwards, low pressure to the southeast, so cool and showery conditions still probably into southern and eastern counties. The European ECM model, this one has high pressure over the UK, so it would likely be a good deal of dry weather around. Finally, the UK Met Office, that also has high pressure over the UK. So I think taking all of those together, there's good support for uh, high pressure to be influencing the UK's weather by the end of the first week. What about the second week? Well, as usual, I'll focus on the ensemble data to try and identify trends and probabilities rather than specifics. Starting with the 16-day GEFS plot for London and southeastern England, across the top it shows forecast upper air temperatures. The thick black line here represents a 30-year norm. So focusing on week two, at the start what we can see is that a lot of runs are quite close to that thick black line. But going forwards, well there's, there's a big spread developing there, but the trend is upwards. The ensemble mean, which is generated by averaging out all of the individual runs, is represented by the thick purple line on these charts. And you can see at the start of week two it's close to a thick black line, but then it climbs a little bit above it and it stays there through the rest of the period. So a warming trend, but I'm going to throw a caveat in at this point, which is updates of the GEFS model in recent days have shown that thick purple line rising higher above the thick black line than this one does. Therefore, it suggests that the latest data is diluting that warming trend through the second week. So it does tend to reduce confidence in the forecast through that period. Looking at rainfall across the bottom here, in the short term it's relatively dry. The low pressure area then comes into play and the number of rain spikes there increases. Each one of those, of course, represents a forecast of rain from one of the runs in the ensemble at the given time. But then from about the 24th or 25th, the rain spikes disappear and it, so it turns drier. Towards the end there, from about 28th of August, rain spikes once more start to show on the plot. So there is an indication of it turning more changeable towards the end of the month and into early September. Jumping up to Glasgow to have a look at the view in the northwest. Upper air temperatures there at the start of week two are generally above the 30 year average. You can see the purple line well above the thick black line here. And they stay there for a while, but from around about the 29th of August, they start to dip. And by the end of the period, the ensemble means very close to the average, but there is quite a spread of outcomes then. In terms of the rainfall, immediate future, it's fairly dry, but then that area of low pressure comes into play. There's some big rain spikes appearing here, some significant heavy rainfall possible for a time. But by about the 24th of August, it turns drier and it then stays relatively dry according to this until about the 28th or 29th when the number of the runs in the ensemble forecasting range starts to rise again. So I think what these charts are both showing, the London and the Glasgow one, is the likelihood of a dry period at the beginning of the second week, but then towards the end of the second week it may be turning more changeable once more. It's very, very difficult to try and pin down the details which these charts are showing actually towards the end of the period. There isn't really a big distinction between the northwest and the southeast by that point. I think, if anything, it does look a little bit wetter in the northwest, but as we've seen several times this summer, that doesn't always turn out to be the case. We have had a number of times when low pressures become uh, centred close to southern and central Britain and the wettest conditions therefore have been in the southern half of the UK. So it's just something to uh, bear in mind. Looking at the two metre temperature plots from the ensemble, this is the 16 day data table for London. Once again focusing on the second week, the orange, this dark orange shows 
21 to 25 Celsius forecast from the individual runs. Those tend to dominate for much of the time, but there is something of a trend towards more cooler runs towards the very end there. The light orange is 16 to 20 Celsius forecast maximums, but I think it's quite weak. In general, to, to summarize this, I would say temperatures through the second week close to or perhaps a little, little bit above the average on many days, perhaps some cooler ones uh, later on. Jumping up to Glasgow, here the orange column, the light orange column is dominant, although it decreases later on. That's going for 16 to 20 Celsius maximum, so cooler in, cooler in the northwest. I think if anything, the trend towards lower temperatures is more marked than the London one than on the London chart, because what we can see here is this yellow uh, shading increases. That's 11 to 15 Celsius. So quite a few runs by the end of the period are going for forecast maximums of between 11 to 15, in fact, 48% by the early part of September. I mentioned that there were signs of it turning more changeable once again towards the end of a 14-day period. And I think this ensemble pressure plot for Manchester offers some support for the idea. At the start of the second week, a lot of runs are forecasting relatively high pressure. But then as we go forwards, quite a few are dipping downwards, bringing areas of low pressure into play. The purple line, which also shows the ensemble mean on this particular chart, is trending downwards too. So more changeable looks likely towards the end, at least based on this current GEFS update. Just taking a look at the what are effectively the pressure anomaly charts, this one being for Saturday the 28th of August, it shows a very strong positive anomaly to the north of the UK. That's indicated by the orangey-brown shading. In fact, the UK itself is under a positive anomaly with negative to the west here. So possibly suggesting that low pressure centered down here, high pressure somewhere up here. But if we go forwards to Monday the 30th of August, bank holiday of course, by then things are changing quite markedly. What we can see is there's a negative anomaly over much of the UK. The positive anomaly to the north is still there, but it's weakened. So possibly low pressure becoming more influential, again, supporting the possibility of it turning more changeable and increasing risk of showers or longer spells of rain. Now, with autumn almost here once again, I thought I would finish with something slightly different this week. So here we've got the GEFS snow forecast data for the Cairngorm Mountains in the Scottish Highlands. The graph and the table are showing individual runs in the ensemble, which have forecast snow to fall, not necessarily accumulate, within a 16-day period. This time last year, the total count was zero. In fact, the first run to predict snow falling over the Cairngorms didn't happen until the 30th of the month. This time around, we've already had seven runs forecasting snow to fall. So quite a big difference. Whether or not there's any significance or not to that, I'll leave you to ponder. Anyway, coming back to the short term, here's the summary for the next 14 days. Week one is looking changeable with uh, showers and dry periods to begin with. During Friday and perhaps Saturday, it could be turning warmer in central and eastern England, but that really will be dependent upon the rate that wet weather moving in from the Atlantic extends across the United Kingdom through the weekend. Towards the end of the first week, it starts to become drier as high pressure builds to the north or the northwest. The risk of showers by then increasingly becoming confined to eastern and possibly southeastern England. Week two, as ever, confidence is low, but it looks like being drier much of the UK early on. Later on, there are signs of pressure beginning to fall again, so the risk of showers or longer spells of rain increases. Temperatures, well, probably vary in around the average, so a mix of warmer and cooler days looks very likely. So, all in all, it's a mixed end to what has been a mixed summer. 
Nonetheless, I hope you enjoyed this forecast and found it useful. If you did, then please remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons below. Thanks for watching now. Bye.